In this video, I will go over the evidence on frozen shoulders. Keep on watching if you want to know the key recommendations. Hi and welcome back to PhysioTutors. For the basis of this video, I have combined the NICE guidelines with some key papers seen here. Without any further ado, let's dive in. When diagnosing someone with a frozen shoulder, the general consensus is that external rotation should be limited and painful passively and actively. Range of motion should be progressively limited and pain around the deltoid insertion is common. History taking and an x-ray are useful to exclude other pathologies. However, calcific tendinosis and osteopenia are often seen in conjunction with the frozen shoulder presentation. Do note that research still needs to validate any diagnostic criteria. The statement that frozen shoulders occur more in females is untrue. It affects both females and males equally. The diagnosis is settled, so what's next? First of all, you should explain to your patient what the term frozen shoulder encompasses and what to expect. Pain will be the main problem initially with disturbed sleep and function. As pain decreases, stiffness will increase over time. The average duration is about 30 months, but can settle somewhere between one and three and a half years. About half of patients will continue to report pain and stiffness years after onset, so the idea that frozen shoulders all resolve fully is a myth. Advising your patient to stay active is mandatory, but continuing to perform activities that worsen the pain is not. Analgesia and hot packs can be tried out to control the pain, especially in the early phase. Regular use of analgesia works better than the when required approach. If basic paracetamol is ineffective, NSAIDs can be tested. An intraarticular steroid injection within the first year with or without physiotherapy is associated with increased pain control, function, and external rotation range of motion in the short term. Subacromial injections might be equally effective, although this claim is a bit uncertain. Adding passive mobilizations and a home exercise program to an injection is associated with enhanced outcomes. There is some evidence to suggest that high-grade mobilizations might be more effective. Hydrodistensions combined with intraarticular corticosteroid injections are equally effective as an injection alone. Acupuncture is not advised, but short-term diathermy, weirdly enough, is. It appears that physiotherapy treatment or an intraarticular injection or distensions or a combination are the best forms of therapy looking at six months out. Jeremy Lewis described a care pathway for frozen shoulder in his masterclass paper of 2015 seen here. Make sure to pause the video for a deep dive. A quick disclaimer, the evidence around these statements is not definitive, as is the case with a lot in physiotherapy. Are you keen to learn more about stiff shoulders? Definitely check out our course with Andrew Cuff and Thomas Mitchell on physiotutors.com. I'm Max for Physiotutors and I will see you in another video. Bye.